It's the story that flashed around the world, a quiet country lunch in Victorian farming country that has resulted in a family devastated, a homicide investigation and a media frenzy. Police have described this case as unusual and complex. Three people have now died and another is fighting for life. for life as police launch a homicide probe, a community in mourning tonight. Victoria police are investigating whether foul play was involved. We have to keep an open mind in relation to this. Death cap mushrooms were on the menu. And now police and journalists are trying to figure out whether this was an innocent mistake or something more sinister. Our journalist, John Ferguson, broke this remarkable yarn. I spoke with John while he was on the road in Victoria, reporting the story for The Australian. The tip originally was several dead, quite a few others poisoned. So that was a little bit high, but I spoke to police and hospital and eventually got a response to say there were, at that stage, two elderly people dead and two others critically ill, and then that afternoon, uh, the third died. So we now have three dead and one critically injured. And so at the beginning, what did you know about what might have been the cause of death? All I was told is that there had been a mass poisoning. Of course, we still don't know today exactly what happened. They think it's death cap mushrooms because that's what fits the just how sick these poor people became very quickly. There were actually seven at the lunch, and only four of those actually, it would appear, ate these mushrooms. The police have said that the former daughter-in-law, where this lunch was had on July 29, her name is Erin Patterson. She's a 48-year-old from Leangatha. She was the cook, so we're not suggesting that anyone's done anything wrong. It might have been just a horrific mistake. She's vehemently saying, I did nothing. I didn't do anything. I love them. And I'm devastated that they're gone. And I hope with every fibre of my being that Don pulls through. Just a note, Erin misspoke there. Don has passed away. At the time she spoke, it was Ian, the pastor, who was still fighting for life. She's the mother of two. She edits a community newsletter that promotes local businesses. She said five years ago when she took over the job that she was really, really grateful to her in-laws. They must have run the newsletter beforehand. We know that she's estranged, but police said that that was amicable. We don't know an awful lot about her estranged husband, but I can't say exactly where he is or what he's doing. Don and Gail Patterson are the cook's former in-laws. Gail Patterson, her sister, Heather Wilkinson, was there as well with her husband. Now, those three, so Don, Gail and Heather, are all dead. And there's a fourth man, a pastor, Ian Wilkinson. He's the sole survivor. Now, I've just been to the Wilkinson's street and spoken to neighbours. He's held in extremely high regard. You can just tell people were very Mm. defensive of them and said they were just magnificent people. We know a bit less about Don and Gail Patterson. That there's no doubt that the Wilkinsons were very, very popular and respected people. And there's nothing to say that the Pattersons aren't of the same ilk. Mm. The head of the Homicide Squad said that it appeared that there was an amicable relationship with the in-laws. There's no doubt that Erin was really emotional when she spoke to media in Langatha. She looked gutted, absolutely gutted. I'm devastated. I love them. And I can't believe that this has happened, and I'm so sorry. They were some of the best people I've ever met. They never did anything wrong to me, and I'm so devastated about what's happened. I've got to say, she looked convincing. So that we can't overinterpret anything. But what's interesting, police have said that Erin Patterson is a suspect. And that's a little bit interesting in a way, because normally they'd say, oh, look, we're just investigating and we don't have any clues at all. But they have specifically said she's a suspect. So what's next from here? Has Homicide given any indication of what to expect next? What will happen is that their toxicology reports, which need to be done and finalised, and cause of death, coronial inquiries, also the progress of the fourth, the surviving person, then I suspect they will go back to the woman who cooked the mushrooms They'll be collecting whatever information they possibly can. 
they'll be hearing a lot of rumours around, but they'll then have to work out, well, what's valid and what's not. I suspect that it could be days before there's any major developments, would be my guess. After the break, what happens when journalists descend on a quiet community in the wake of tragedy? And how do reporters handle all the emotion? In Victoria's dairy country, John Ferguson is investigating a mystery. There are two towns that are basically the focus of this story. One's Gatha. People may know Wilson's Promontory, which is pretty famous, the National Park. It's not that far from the Prom. It's fairly big, I'd say about 10,000 people. Service town, really, for quite a productive agricultural area. And Corumbara is a smaller town of about 5,000 people where two of the victims came from. Mm. It's rolling dairy country, sort of beef country. It's a bit like the Southern Highlands near Sydney, Mm. that sort of territory. So, look, I grew up in the country and there were three things I was taught when growing up. Don't play with tiger snakes, don't go near the dam and don't touch mushrooms. It's a pretty known thing amongst country people that, particularly when you've got kids, that things can go wrong with mushrooms. And so I imagine... Police will be really interested in how could this have happened? Where did the mushrooms come from? Now, they talk about death cap mushrooms, which is what they suspect these mushrooms to be. Horrific death, terrible. Basically, you get organ failure. And in the case of the survivor, the pastor, Ian Wilkinson, who's in Austin Hospital, he has, according to police, had liver failure and will need a liver transplant. So Mm. I suppose the many questions that you could have is who sourced the mushrooms, who foolishly, let's be honest, thought that they'd be good to eat. And we know who cooked them, but we don't know where these mushrooms came from. So that's all stuff that police will be looking very closely at. There are suggestions that they seized a dehydrator from the house and dehydrators can be used to dry mushrooms. The head of the homicide squad wouldn't say specifically whether that's what they'd done, but in many ways all roads lead to the mushrooms and then it becomes a question of intent. Now, you broke the story on the Australian's website around the middle of the day on Saturday and now I presume Gippsland is crawling with journalists, is it? There's a lot of interest in the story. You would expect that, and in some ways I think the locals can sometimes find that, well, intrusive, and it is, but at the same time you're also looking at three dead and one critically ill, so people are going to want to sift the truth from the rumour and I suppose come up with viable answers. I'm nearly 40 years in the game, and I actually learned a long time ago that you just respect people and give them their space, and I think journalists generally do a really good job in difficult circumstances. So there is a way of trying to get that awful, awkward middle ground of doing your job but not traumatising people. And it can be done. I've done so many of these stories, and one's a lot bigger than this, where people are upset and we do know that people get upset and we do try and make allowances for that. I always try and think about how I would feel. I feel pretty passionate about doing the right thing, about people who are affected by these things. And frankly, in Australia, I know journalists cop a bad rap, but it's much, much more civilised here in Australia than it is, for example, in the UK, whereas I think there's a bit of an unwritten code in Australia to try and understand where people are coming from. 